over here because why not so hello everyone in the current event please feel free to come over to the stage i'm going to be doing a talk on the art of camera movement so for any of you that are into filmmaking or video i've got a nice presentation here that hopefully will benefit you in helping tell a story through your visuals so that's what we're going to be talking about today so if you are having a mooch about and you do fancy coming over for a talk please nip on over and we can have some fun was that good enough do you reckon that'll get people over we'll see <laughs> right let's see if i can set this up so you guys can hear me everyone at the back can you hear me all right yeah good nice okay there's a few technical difficulties, so I'm going to have to jump in and out of my presentation every now and then, but um, it shouldn't be a problem. Anyway, so first of all, thanks everyone for coming to the talk today. I really hope this is going to be really beneficial for you. Um, a little bit about me. My name's James. I'm a commercial filmmaker, videographer, um, and I also do a little bit of YouTube, you know, giving a bit of tips, tricks, behind the scenes, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm also quite fortunate. I get to work with some pretty cool brands. Um, I just got back from Dubai shooting for Emirates, which was really cool. Um, shoot a lot of social media content for a lot of different um, larger companies. I'm also an ambassador for Sony, so um, trying to just give you an idea of the kind of stuff that I do. Um, <coughs> who have we got in the audience? Have we got photographers in the audience? Stick your hand up if you're a photographer. Wow, okay, so there's quite a lot of photographers. Uh, videographers? Okay, oh, it's pretty balanced then, that's all right. Um, so today's presentation is gonna be on video. So it should be really beneficial, I hope, for those of you that are into video. And for those of you that are photographers, are you interested in getting into video? Stick your hands up if you are a photographer and you're interested. Okay, cool, nice. Well, in that case, I really hope that this is gonna be nice and beneficial for you. So, um, as filmmakers, we have so many different tools at our disposal to help tell a story or to help push an emotion on our audience. Because at the end of the day, when you're making a film, you're making a video, you want the person who's watching it, the viewer, to feel an emotion. And when it comes to shooting, we have so many different tools that allows our audience to feel something or at least influence them to feel a certain emotion. Obviously, the first one, the narrative, the script, it's really obvious. Obviously, the words that the actors are gonna be saying, um, the actual words that are spoken, they're gonna make you feel a certain way. The characters or the subjects in the frame, the way that the character holds himself, the way that the character moves, that they act, their kind of mannerisms is gonna put a big kind of impact on how you actually feel about the character in the film. The art design, this is a short film that I shot probably about four years ago now for a company called Allianz. And um, as you can see, the actual set itself kind of gives you an idea about the film. It's going to give you an idea of what you should kind of expect to see. So we've obviously got a child in the middle there and then the set around it already gives you a few, cl a few clues and a few ideas on what the actual film is going to be about. The sound design. Who knows what sound design is here? Hands up if you know what sound design is. Okay, cool. So sound design is essentially where you add little sounds to things you can see in the frame. So for example, this here, this was a film that I shot for the Sony FX6 where our subject is actually writing a, a note that they're going to stick in a bottle to... That's the end of the film, so I'm not going to let you know about that. But um, as you can see, he's actually writing. And when the pencil is kind of scraping across the paper, I wanted to add in that sound of the pen just, you know, scratching. And it actually allows the audience to feel immersed into the scene. So instead of just hearing the music and maybe some waves in the background, you can actually hear and feel that sound that's going on in the frame. And for me, and a lot of people, it is the most immersive way to bring your audience into the scene and make them actually feel it instead of just watch it. Music choice is obviously a huge one. I think we probably all know this scene here. Um, Interstellar, Hans Zimmer, probably the most incredible imposer on the planet, in my opinion. And that music actually influences you to feel something. You know, them big emotional highs, them big lows. Fast-paced music, it makes you feel anxious. Nice, slow, drawn-out music might make you feel a bit more relaxed. And that is exactly what the filmmaker intended you to feel using that music. It wasn't just thrown in there because they liked the piece. It's there to make you actually feel something. Same again with lighting. You can probably tell I'm a big fan of the Joker film. Um, obviously, when it comes to lighting, if you're a wedding videographer, 
You don't want your lighting to be super hard, harsh, contrasty and dark. You want it to be nice, light, beautiful. Make that day look like a dream to the couple that are getting married. However, if you're shooting a horror movie, you're going to want to make that look dark, dirty, grim, contrasty. And that is obviously a way that is going to make your audience feel that by adding in that light and actually lighting your scene in a particular way. The colour grade, which in my opinion is probably my most favourite part of the entire filmmaking process. Obviously, we can influence our audience by our grade. So on the left there, we've got a really nice kind of clean white, almost a bit cold look. And then on the right, we've got this kind of June looking, deserty, hard, hot feel. So we can influence our audience into feeling a certain way by the way that our colour grade looks. The composition, obviously where we stick our camera, are we right up in our character's face? Are we in their head if we're really nice and close and wide? Or are we, you know, pulled out a big, nice establishing shot where we're actually looking and taking context from what's inside the frame instead of how our character's feeling right up close? Obviously, the last one, editing. How we edit our scene. Do we keep it really nice and slow with long cuts? Or do we cut it really fast to make it seem really intense? And obviously, the editor and the directors intended that edit to be cut that way so that you feel something. And the one that I want to be talking about today is camera movement. How do we move our camera to make our audience feel a certain way? And if, for those of you who are photographers, you're obviously only thinking about the one snap, right? So where your camera is, snapping the frame, obviously the composition, lighting, the edit is all really important. But when it comes to video, an element that we really have to focus on is how we move our camera to make our audience feel something. And what's really important is motivated camera movement. We want to use camera movement to influence our audience. We don't just want to put a camera move in there because it looks cool. A lot of people are just going to use gimbals, and I've, I'm guilty of that as well. I, I've shot so many shots on a gimbal that probably shouldn't have been shot on a gimbal. Um, so, yeah, motivated camera movement. What we're trying to tell the audience, how we're trying to make them feel, is going to be so important when it comes to actually moving our camera. So, I'm going to show you a film now called Sky on Fire, which I shot about two years ago on a little island in uh, Portugal. Um, and I hope you guys really like it. I'm not going to tell you too much because we're going to break it down afterwards. But here is Sky on Fire. I just need to come out of my presentation to show you. And I hope you guys really enjoy it because... Uh, <laughs> Took me quite a long time to make. So let's have a little look. Oh, let's try it a bit differently. Okay, guys, I really hope you enjoy this. Got no audio. Colin, let me try one more thing, all right? Sorry, guys, hold with us for a second. Oh, nope, didn't like that one either. Mm. Apologies for the audio uh, troubles here, guys. As soon as I've got this sorted, we should hopefully be able to watch it and hear it and feel it as well, because that's the whole point of it. So hopefully that'll be, uh, that'll be with you in a sec. No, nothing? Okay. Let me just try one more thing on it. Let me quickly change my sound settings. Give this another go. Okay. That is very strange. Let's try this one real quick. Hmm. Right, we might have to do this one with the audio off, but that's okay, because I've got links to this video online, so feel free to watch it there. Colin, maybe we just turn it off for now. Yeah, and I'll play it without, because um, I'm going to be talking about camera movement anyway, so it's not the end of the world. I'm just going to pull my HDMI out, guys. For some reason, it sometimes likes to play up when the HDMI is in there. Colin, let's try one more time.
No. All right then, guys, we're going to watch this without the audio. But the good thing is that this is about camera movement and not about sound. So I hope you guys still enjoy this. Some of you may have seen this before, some of you may not. Um, and we'll be breaking down the film afterwards. So let's have a little watch of Sky on Fire. And then we can, um, we can go from there. Let's see. If I can get this to work. Be really helpful. There you go. Guys, I'm going to try a little something for you, so hopefully you can get an idea of what we're listening to here. I'm actually going to put the microphone on my speakers on my laptop, and I really hope that that works. So, let's have a little listen. Thank you. So we got there in the end, just about. Did you all hear that all right, yeah? Good. Because I was hoping so, because so much of that is about hearing it and feeling it, you know? So I really, I'm really glad that you could in the end there, because that would have been a shame if not. Um, we're going to be watching that again later, so that's going to be fun. Um, right, let's jump back in then. Okay, so just a little bit on Sky on Fire, just so that I can give you a bit of, a, bit of context to it. <coughs> So the Sony FX6 just came out. This was, what, like 2020, I think. Um, and I was in such a fortunate position for Sony to approach me to make 
anything I wanted with this new camera. I mean, like, I literally couldn't ask for anything more. Um, as a filmmaker, that is pretty much as good as it gets for me. Um, and obviously had budget as well to make the film, so it was like, great. Um, so a few years prior, I went to a small island just off the coast of Portugal um, and didn't expect to even get a sunset, but we raced to the top of this mountain. I literally peeked over this hill and I just see the light bursting through, just touching the tips of the clouds. And it was like a moment I'll never, ever forget and a memory that was just so powerful for me. Um, and from that memory, I decided to form a film from it. Obviously, I wasn't stuck on a beach or washed up and that, that was just a bit of fiction, you know, because you know what filmmaking's like. Um, but yeah, that's essentially how that film came about. Um, and obviously, throughout that film, I really just wanted to use camera movement intentionally motivated camera movement so that the viewer could feel something when they were actually watching it. So when it comes to camera movement, for me, I think about two different things. I think to myself, is my audience in this scene with my character, on that journey with the character, or, the, or have they taken a step back and observing the frame and observing what's going on in the scene? Um, and throughout this film, I use both of these different techniques to either take the audience into the film with the character or I'd give them a breather, a step back, so you can actually analyse what's going on in the frame. So when it comes to shooting, there's, a, there's so many different styles of shots, but the ones I want to go over are handheld shooting, obviously when we're shooting with the camera with our hands, a static shot, which is, you know, just on a, on a tripod. On a tripod, you've got things like pans, tilts, and, um, well, just pans and tilts and static frames. And we've also got shots which are called push-ins and pull-out shots. A push-in is exactly what it says. The camera pushes into the scene or pulls out. And nowadays, with technology, we can get a gimbal for, like, two, three hundred quid. I mean, like, how fortunate are we nowadays as filmmakers to have equipment that can do what it can do for, like, two hundred quid? It's a joke, really. We're just super lucky to be alive in this generation, to be honest with you. Um, and then orbit shots. Orbit shots are essentially where the camera rotates around our subject. And it's a really interesting shot, depending on what you actually want to use it for in terms of how you want to make your audience feel. So, first one I want to go over is handheld shooting. For me, when you're shooting handheld, it feels like the lens is a set of eyes in on the scene with our character. So if I show you the shots of are of Scar and Fire, all of the handheld ones, for me, it feels like I'm there with our character. I feel like I'm following him in the scene with him, right? Um, whereas if we wasn't handheld, it wouldn't necessarily feel that way. So at certain times, when I want my audience to feel like they've been thrown into the scene and have that experience with my character, I want to go handheld. Because right now, it's got that chaos, it's got that rush, it's got that feeling as if you're actually there with a character. And at times, it's really important to think about, right, how am I going to move my camera to allow my audience to feel something? And for me, handheld is easily one of my most, most favourite immersive experiences when it comes to actually how you move your camera. So when I first started out, my, well, it's about four years after I started my career, I started doing loads of boxing videos for Sky Sports, Matchroom Boxing, um, and I essentially went, travelled all around Europe to shoot different athletes and different boxers um, when it was time to promote a fight and I would essentially make the promotional video for Sky and, and whoever else was broadcasting to use that video so they could promote the fight and when you're promoting a fight, boxing for example, you want it to be immersive, exciting, fun, thrilling and that's it, handheld is like the only real way in my opinion that you're going to get that feeling right. So when it comes to shooting fast paced action, handheld for me is the only way to go about it. Being inside the ring, nice up and close, that fast, aggressive, handheld style movement feels exciting, it feels intense. I feel like I'm right up there with the fighters themselves or with the athletes. And that for me is why I'll only really use handheld movements in them fast scenarios. Because this is just an exaggerated version of how you can throw your audience into a scene using camera movement. <coughs> Gimbal shooting. There's so many different styles of shots we can do with a gimbal nowadays. I mean, you can, do, you can mimic different shots like booms where the camera goes up. We can push in like we would on a dolly or on a track. And we can really use the, this incredible tool to help tell a story and give a feeling from our frame, essentially. So these are going to be the gimbal shots from Sky on Fire. The intro shots. 
So on our very first shot, you can see we're just pushing into the scene. And I actually want to pause it on this one here because for me, when I'm starting a film, this is, this is called an establishing shot, by the way. Does anyone know what an establishing shot is? Yeah, okay, cool. So we're essentially establishing our scene. We're giving our audience as much information, depending on how much you want them to know at this point, we're giving them, I was in this point anyway, giving the audience as much information as I, want, as I could. So, center of the frame, we've got our main subject. We can see on his back, he's probably had a bit of a rough time. He might have been traveling for a while on this. What we can see is a remote island. Um, and obviously, in the frame, we've got a few little bits of um, some props, bag, boots. Tells us a little bit about the character. Instead, if, even though we don't actually know who he is or can see his face, we can see the back of his hair is a little bit damaged. Um, and obviously, we've got a map and a bottle in the foreground there. But the most important thing I want to talk about is the movement of the camera. Oh. See how the camera pushes into the scene. It brings, off, it brings the audience forward. It bring, it, it, what's the word I'm looking for? It emphasizes intensity. We're building the intensity to the scene. And it essentially just makes, pushes our audience forward. It knows that we're, we're going into something now. And I do this all the time when it comes to my films. Like that was another intro shot to a short film that I made there. Um, and for some reason for me, pushing in on a scene is probably my favorite shot because it just builds that intensity. It builds a bit of anticipation. It also builds importance to what's in front of the frame. So it's really important that you actually think about that. Think about what I want to do with my frame. How, how do I want my audience to feel? Are we traveling with the scene? The orbit shot. Orbit shot is obviously when you've got your static subject in the frame and the camera moves around our subject. I don't know about you guys, because obviously it's very subjective, but for me, this feels very immersive. It feels like this character is all consumed by the background. They're consumed by their environment. They're in awe at what they're looking at. And we're also showing different aspects of the character's face. So we're seeing all of the character at this point. We're showing their, their emotions. We're showing how in awe they are. But most importantly, it's all, all consuming. And for me personally, that's why I will, will use an orbit shot, because I want the audience to feel like Luke, who is our character here, is just consumed by this environment that he's in. And I want the audience to come along on that journey with him as well. But as you can see, because we're not handheld, we've kind of taken a step back, and now we can actually analyze the frame a bit more. We're not like right up there. And obviously, we're shooting in 60 frames a second, so it's slowed down a bit more to emphasize that moment. And speed is just another thing that we can use to really build a moment or build an atmosphere or a feeling to our audience. Now, this is just one I've added in as a little bit of a, a, bit of a trick shot. Um, a boom and a tilt. <coughs> Pardon me. So a boom is essentially when the camera will go up or go down physically. Typically, you can do that on a gimbal, but also it's done on a, a dolly or a jib where the camera moves up and down. One of my favorite shots is a boom up and a tilt down. And I'll explain why in a minute. So at the end of our film, we obviously got this handheld scene. And then we come in and then we have our hero shot of the film. Camera comes up, tilts down. And I want you to think, a little, think for a minute about what that shot means to you in terms of the framing. Does it make you feel something? Does it make you feel like that character is has a connection to that background? How does the background feel? Because for me, a boom up and a tilt down shot like that, if you watch the background, the background and the landscape comes up and into the frame. And now we're all consumed by that background. And we started off looking at our character pretty dead on, and then we went up and tilted down, making them look a little bit insignificant in the end. And for me, I wanted this shot to be all about this experience and about this impactful, incredible landscape and background that our subject is experiencing. And that was a really, really big conscious decision I made when I was making the storyboard for this film. I specifically wanted this shot. And we went back to this location like 14 times, sunrise and sunset, to get the actual light. And it was a nightmare. So I don't recommend it unless you get the light on day one because I nearly killed Luke, bless his heart. Like, he worked so hard on this. Um, so yeah, this was in Madeira. Um, I really recommend going there if you haven't. It's the most incredible place to shoot, in my opinion, ever. But um, yeah, that shot should actually give you a good idea of how 
you tr how you think about psychologically what your audience is feeling when they're watching your film and how just how important camera movement is. So our camera movement is just one of them ways that we can create that emotional roller coaster when it comes to a film. Obviously, we don't always want it to be super intense. <coughs> pardon me. We don't want it to be super intense all the time. We want to build them peaks, build them troughs, allow the audience to take a step back and have a breather, analyze the frame, see what's going on, all subconsciously, obviously. But that camera movement is going to really help you build them moments and help your audience feel immersed for one second, feel like they're disconnected for the next. And it's really important that you actually think about that when you actually want to make a piece that is emotional and that hits, hits an audience. It's all subconscious. When you're watching a film, you don't necessarily think. If you're watching a good film anyway, you don't think about the camera movement. It's just there and it's done specifically to make you subconsciously feel a certain way. So we're going to watch Sky on Fire one more time. And I want you to look at it from that perspective. Try and see it from the perspective of, oh, how, how does this shot actually aid the feeling that James is trying to give off? And also try and watch the final frame on the beach. You might notice something a little bit different from the intro frame. So, Sky on Fire, take two. So there you go again. Did you guys see it differently the second time or did you analyze it differently? Um, I hope so. And I'm not sure if you noticed, but the actual final shot there is actually a pull out. So our very first intro scene to the entire film is that push in. Because I want the audience to feel like they're coming into this scene. We're being let in on this little moment, this little memory. And then once that memory or moment is done, as you can see here, I actually want to then pull out. It's like, great, we've gone in and we've seen this moment, and now, as the audience, it's our time to leave, and that moment's there. And that's why I wanted to keep it a memory. That's what that film is about, really. So, that is it from me, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed that. Um, obviously, for the photographers in here, it's probably not something you've really thought about before, but if you are going to jump into video, it might seem a little bit daunting and stuff, because it is quite intense, I guess, when you're trying to analyze different camera movements and whatnot. But it is really something to think about because it is really going to make your films go from being 
pretty good and look good to actually having emotions driven in there and actually having motivated camera movement. Um, and as soon as you start to jump into cinematography, obviously you've got your lighting, you've got your composition, you've got your framing, you've got your grade, but the actual movement of that camera, really important. Who's left their car lights on? Anyway, guys, I'm going to be knocking about, so if any of you want to have a chat or if you've got any questions, feel free to ask them. Um, if not, I'm going to be over at the Sony booth for pretty much the rest of the day, so please feel free to come and have a chat. Um, I'm up for a good chinwag, so if anyone wants one, let's have it. Cheers, guys. Thank you.